And today we're gonna do a long shag haircut. So I'm gonna start with establishing a guide right on top of the head, right at the crown, a small guide that will travel actually throughout the entire haircut. And that's a very important key right here because this will determine um, how much layer uh, you're gonna create all around the head. So it is the key point of the entire haircut is understanding how short you want your layers to be. A few things to consider as you're doing that is how much length you're gonna leave because you want a seamless sort of blend from the shortest layer to the longest layer. So the particular, particular aspect of a shag is really totally flattened layer throughout the entire shape. So we're gonna go fairly short right on top. So I'm gonna go probably about right here and I'm gonna use a blade for this one because I wanna create the line as well as the softness at the same time. So I'm gonna take a little bit longer than the length of the blade as a, as a reference potentially. I'm just gonna go and eliminate that length right away. Now this guide that I have at the crown is gonna now travel throughout the entire head in order to establish the rest of the length. So I'm gonna let this one fall and I'm gonna start with the back and I'm gonna take a small section of it and then take a section all the way down to the nape. <clears throat> And now the important part here is, of course, we want to maintain as much length as possible. So the important part here is to check the bottom length that we have with the top and see if it reaches. If it doesn't reach, that means you have a lot of room to explore and cut a lot of, hair, a lot of length off. So I'm going to start that first section really following the head shape. So I'm starting really creating convex layers following the head shape. So straight out at 90 degrees from the head and I'm repeating the same length. As I reach just above the occipital, which is where I am right now, so let me get that last little bit. Now I'm gonna change my body position. Now my next section, I'm simply going to pivot, continuing exactly the same, taking a small section from my established guide following the head shape, cutting with the blade. So what you see what the blade creates here, it's a very soft angle on the ends. Again, right above the occipital, following the head shape. And now I'm switching my cutting angle. not necessarily taking a guide from the previous section, simply elevating straight out. And you see I have the piece that I've cut and then I have my legs. And I do a very slight blend to the legs. So what that creates, it's a lot of layers, but still maintaining the legs. And I'm gonna continue pivoting around until I reach the back of the ear. So the key here as you go towards the back of the ear uh, is to remember that we have a lot of hair in the back compared to the amount of hair we have on the side. So we can go a lot more into deep layers when it comes to that part of the head. So this is really the last section behind the ear here. And as you see, I'm slightly directing it towards the back because I want to maintain a little bit of weight because we have quite a big opening right behind the ear right here, especially on a mannequin head. And that will be different depending on kind of each client or each model you're going to work that on. So I want to maintain, just to be safe, I can always go back and then cut it a little bit shorter if I wish later on. But right now I want to be safe, so I'm going to slightly over direct towards the back and do exactly the same thing. And I still have my little guide that's right here that's telling me how much to cut. Straight out. If you have your perimeter fall out, it's fine. Don't worry about it. It's a very slight blend we're doing towards the end. 
And you see already some texture starts to develop as the hair starts to dry. It's also an important thing here to uh, not over wet the hair. You wanna make sure that you can start reading the texture a little bit more. So if your hair is sopping wet, it's gonna be very difficult to actually know how much you need to cut, how much you need to go back. So make sure you maintain a similar level of moisture throughout the entire haircut. So you see that I didn't create any hole or anything and the complete length has been maintained and doesn't look super thin, which is a very important part of creating a shag while still maintaining a long hair feel. All right, and then finally, the front section, where I can kind of take a bigger section here I want to join the two, what I did from the other side and this one and make sure there's no inconsistency. Okay. All right, so now I've had, I have my layers distributed everywhere. I can kind of do a little bit of a gut check to make sure it's consistent throughout. But again, I'm not looking for perfection in this case. I'm really looking for visually something that works all together and that's harmonious around the hair, around the head. And I'm gonna start with the fringe. <clears throat> the one thing with the fringe, again, I don't want it to be forced. So I'm not gonna take a section that's so precise. I'm actually gonna kind of shake the mannequin head and see where the hair falls naturally. Because the worst thing that could happen here is to create a fringe where you're going to have so many overlay and overlap and that's going to be uh, not working with sort of the organic seal of the entire haircut. So I'm going to take a section in the middle from what falls right on the forehead. And then very lightly with the blade, now I'm going to skim the surface. And I want this fringe to be long and very wispy. So I skim back and forth probably the length of about an inch. So it's nothing that's going to be uh, harsh or anything like that. Now I'm going to, again, kind of comb and let it kind of sit where it will. And take the section without necessarily tracing it on the head but just seeing where it naturally falls. And I'm gonna do a very similar approach to what I did on the, other, on the other side, which is what I did on the top, which is taking a bit of a guide, but it's again, more of a visual guide. And then I'm gonna start going longer towards the side. So then I create fringe that is very soft, movable, and I can blend very easily with the side while not completely blending uh, geometrically. So I'm gonna do the same on the other side. And then I'll sort of separate it from what falls on the face to what falls on the side. And I have my visual guide, which is right in the middle. And I'm gonna very lightly blend until kind of a, I reach out no hair. And then I'm just looking at it. I want something soft that will open up. A little bit of that 70s feel that we're thinking about when we think of a shag. And that blends very evenly to the side without necessarily being um, technically blended, if that makes sense. So that's it for now. Next step is we're gonna blow dry and do a few last checks on dry hair. Okay, so here the blow dry is finished just with a paddle brush, a flat wrap, just to get a little bit of a, you know, obviously smoothness and make sure that we can kind of see the hair when it's dry. Again, because I didn't really over wet the hair throughout the haircut, the blow dry only takes a few minutes in this case. And then the last step now is kind of looking at how the layers lay together and, uh, and then check where we need to release some weight. Um, and then blend anywhere where necessary. So I'm gonna start with the front here, and I see you know, how the bangs kind of fall with the side. Just gonna take the side section, 
and then very lightly using texturizing shears just soften the ends a little bit more and then make sure I have a soft blend from the fringe to the lens. Also, you've noticed so far, I haven't touched anything on the perimeter. So I'm also gonna go in the perimeter and make sure um, that we establish a proper length and that it's not all jagged and it can grow nicely. So immediately by just doing this and using my fingers, I can expose much more of the layers by simply uh, elevating a little bit and removing some of the extra weight. <coughs> so I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side starting with the corner of the fringe. Just very lightly, I'm not trying to change really the length or anything, I'm just trying to soften where it blends and where it meets the sides. And then my best bet here, or my best guide would be my eyes, as well as my fingers and my hands to see how it blends and that it's consistent from one side to the other. <coughs> I'll take that first section. It looks a little heavy to my eye. And just very lightly release some of this extra weight right here. Okay, now the, the key here is gonna be to kind of look at the overall silhouette. And where I see a little bit of heaviness, like I feel it's a little heavy right in that zone, I'm just gonna elevate this one and then slightly release additional weight. When you use your texturizing shears like that, it's always better to elevate because when it falls down, you won't see any notch or any sign or any mark. And then there's no right or wrong in this case, it is really about releasing the weight checking it down and make sure it looks more seamless. So you can see already by just removing that little extra, how it blends a lot easier. Now you know that we have a slight disconnection on the side because we changed our cutting angle. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go against the section. I took vertical pie section all the way around. Now I'm gonna go against it <clears throat> and see how I can blend those two. So just very lightly, removing that extra weight and visually blend even more. So as the hair falls, you don't see a difference in the layers and it blends seamlessly throughout the entire head. But you see all that texture that exists in there and that can easily be exposed by just shaking the hair naturally. Same on the other side. So I'm taking a diagonal section that goes against my previous cutting. And as you see, I get the same disconnection that I had on the other side from the back to the side right here. I'm just gonna very lightly blend these two together. And my guide in this case is only my eyes to make sure it looks completely seamless from the back to the front. And I'm also checking obviously that I don't touch the legs and don't remove too much weight because I still want this hair to be a long haircut. So there you have it, a modern shag with very kind of a 70s look, but still very modern and right for today. Thank you for joining.